I'm Chris Paul, and you're watching HoopJab.com. Welcome to the Mayweather versus Pacquiao conference call. If at any time you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. I will now turn the call over to Chris de Blasio. Thank you, operator, and thanks to uh, all the press for jumping on the line so quickly. Um, wanted to make our executives available. Uh, Steven Espinoza from Showtime Sports and Ken Hirschman from HBO Sports are on the line with us tonight. And uh, we're going to take a few questions from the, pre from the press and talk about the initial excitement here for this, uh, this May 2nd pay-per-view event. So without further ado, I'd like to ask uh, Stephen to make an initial comment, and also we'll hear from Ken right away, and then we'll go to questions. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for getting on so, uh, so quickly. We're obviously thrilled uh, to be a part of this, uh, what we expect will be a record-breaking event. This deal is the product of a lot of hard work, uh, some blood, sweat, and tears along the way from uh, a, a, a team of many people, um, starting with you know, our senior executives, not only of Showtime, but also at CBS, um, the Mayweather team and Floyd Mayweather, as well as our counterparts at HBO and, of course, Manny Pacquiao and his team. Um, I took this job approximately three years ago. Um, the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight has been a topic of conversation, has been a goal of not only ours, uh, but of Floyd Mayweather's uh, since he came over to Showtime uh, a little less than three years ago. Uh, we believed this day would come. We uh, worked hard to make it happen, and we're thrilled that it's here. Uh, I will now turn it over to Ken for his comments as well. Stephen, um, you know, let me reiterate, this is what Stephen just said. It's, um, it's what we're in this sport for. This is the biggest boxing event of all time. We're confident of that. And uh, we couldn't be prouder to be a part of it and to have helped um, craft it. And, um, you know, we look forward to May 2nd. It's going to be a spectacular night for the sport and, um, you know, a spectacular night for HBO and Showtime as well. So, you know, we're, we're looking forward to getting going, and uh, there's a lot of hard work ahead of us. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll throw it open to questions now and answer what we can, but recognize that this obviously just came together. So, um, you know, there's a lot more work to, to come and, and details to come, so we might not be able to answer everything right now. As a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. The first question comes from Black Sports Online, Robert Lattell. Thank you so much, and um, thank you, Stephen and Ken. Um, the question that I had, and, and this is specifically uh, for Stephen, um, how much of an effect uh, in getting this thing done uh, had to do with Mayweather accidentally running into Manny Pacquiao at, at the Heat game? It seemed like once that happened, uh, things really started moving in a positive direction. Um, it, it, it's one of those fortuitous coincidences uh, that we probably could never have planned, um, but were, were very lucky uh, to have happened. Um, I wouldn't say that the deal wouldn't have happened without that, but it certainly wouldn't have happened that quickly. You know, possibly wouldn't have happened a, at all. Um, but uh, I believe that the the direct line of of communication between Floyd and Manny. Um, cleared up a lot of doubts on, in, on, 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 in both of their minds and um, sort of renewed their commitment um, to getting this fight done. And the second question that I had, a, a lot of fans are wondering, uh, because it's such a big fight, uh, will the pay-per-view uh, prices uh, be different uh, than your standard Mayweather or your standard uh, Pacquiao fight? Well, at this point, as, as Ken mentioned, um, you know, we are very early in the process. We haven't even uh, begun conversations with our distributors. Um, once we get those agreements in place, we'll be able to provide information such as the, uh, the retail press. Um, we've seen a lot of speculation already in the press about uh, the, the suggested price, um, and that's incorrect. It has not yet been decided. All right, thank you. And, and Ken, one last final question for you. Uh, we do know a couple of years ago there was some, uh, you know, disagreement between HBO and Showtime. 
Uh, do you feel now with Mayweather and Pacquiao coming together that that gap uh, or that, that bridge has now been made and there will be more, uh, you know, working together between the two networks uh, to bring, you know, fans the best fights uh, that they're looking for? Yeah, look, I think that, you know, we we each have our businesses to run and, and clearly, you know, that is uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue to compete with each other the way we always do and that's healthy for the sport we think. Um, you know, and, and if something this of this magnitude presents itself and the only way to get it done is to collaborate then, you know, I know we have, um, you know, the ability to get something done or at least have a conversation. Everything, you know, is on the table. We, um, you know, we can't always work it out, but this time we did, and we're happy we did, and um, we look forward to May 2nd. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, very much for answering my question. The next question comes from Las Vegas Review, Steve Karp. Gentlemen. Congratulations on getting this done. Uh, can you clarify, first of all, I know it's a collaborative effort, but um, will, will the fight be shown on just a channel separate from Showtime and HBO like, uh, like a regular pay-per-view would be? In other words, in Vegas here, it, it's Cable 501. It's just a regular channel for pay-per-view. Is that how this will work? Yeah, this is... Traditional pay-per-view. There will be nothing out of the ordinary on that front. Okay, so it won't be on Showtime pay-per-view, and it won't be on HBO pay-per-view. Also, guys, could you uh, clarify who the announcing team will be? Um, as uh, Again, and I, I may sound like a broken record, as will uh, Ken, um, we've had significant discussions about uh, who will make up the team. Um, we haven't resolved all of that yet. Um, it will be uh, an all-star uh, an all-star team, that, that being said, a, a combination of, of, of talent from both networks. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be ready probably to announce that in the coming weeks, but at this point, it's not yet final. No, because there were rumors that Jim Lampley would be the blow-by-blow, Albert C would be the color, James Brown would be the, um, the host for the, the fight, and, and Max Kellerman and, uh, and somebody else would be the, uh, and Jim Gray would be the, uh, the, uh, so to speak, the uh, announcers, you know, the sideline reporters. Yeah, at this point, we're not quite ready to confirm any, any of those arrangements. We, we'd like to finalize everything so we can give you a complete picture of what's going on, and we expect to be able to do that fairly shortly. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Our next question comes from Ring TV, Andreas Hale. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, again, for, for having this call. My question is, uh, with Floyd Mayweather, and this goes to you, Stephen, with Floyd Mayweather having two fights left on this contract, can you shed any light on this if there is an immediate rematch clause? Um, uh, I can. You know, there's uh, this is a one-fight deal. Okay, so it is a one-fight deal. Okay, and my other question, and this goes to both of you, when it came to the negotiations, was the HBO Showtime collaboration the final thing that needed to get done, or was there something else you could shed some light on and how this all came together? Ken, you can, you want to take that first? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, look, I, it, it required a consensus among everybody, and the timing was everyone was working really hard and in good faith to get everything done. There was no, you know, hold up on one end or the other. It was really all simultaneous. And, um, you know, I think that what it shows is that, you know, everybody was truly motivated to cooperate and make concessions that they, you know, they found uncomfortable at times, difficult to, um, you know, to, to, to come to that place. And, and that's a sign of a fair deal is that it, everybody, you know, compromised and, um, Everyone compromised at the right time, and you know it's a, it's really a credit to Floyd and to Manny that they you know push their respective teams and networks to um, to, to get this done. And I think it's a credit to Stephen and and his staff and, and team for the way they handled themselves through this. And and we look forward to that spirit continuing all the way through May second. And then you know we'll go back to uh, you know our, our regular day jobs after that. Yeah, all right, great. Thank you, guys. The next question is from Fox Sports, Marvin Vapeda. 
Hi, gentlemen. How are you? I'm um, just wondering about the uh, All Access series and also the 24-7. Are those still going to go on, on on your respective channels? Yeah, again, I think that I'll take Stephen's <laughs> approach. We haven't really figured out exactly what we're going to do. We know we're going to do uh, programming to support this. It deserves it, but, um, you know, those details are, have yet to be fully fleshed out. So we'll get you that, that information as soon as we have it. Thank you, gentlemen. The next question is from Cl Complex Media, Anthea Anthony Asensio. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, my first question is, do you guys have any insight as to why Floyd was so hung up on the May 2nd date? And while we all know it's the biggest fight of all time, do you think there is enough time to execute a proper promotion with all the you know, productions you guys will have to put together. Um, with respect to the date, this is Steven, um, with respect to the date, um, that's been a, a bit of a tradition for, for Floyd uh, in, in recent years. Um, he is uh, a creature of habit, um, and he, is a, he sort of has attuned his body and his performance to the May and September dates. Um, so he, in his mind had definitively made a decision he was fighting on May 2nd, um, and the only question left was which opponent. Um, we were, uh, he was fixated, quite honestly, on, on Manny Pacquiao um, and, you know, continued to push us for that fight um, and, and really never focused on anyone else. Um, and what's the second piece of the question? Uh, I just said while, while we all know this is no matter what the biggest fight of all time, do you guys have enough time to execute a proper promotion with all the things still outstanding in terms of, you know, who's going to call what, um, you know, or whether you're going to, you know, produce, you know, this docu-series and whatnot? It will be a tremendous, tremendous amount of work. It will be a complex undertaking. Um, but we're confident that, you know, between the, the smart people here at Showtime and the smart people at HBO, that we'll have everything in order to do a tremendous promotion and pull off the biggest boxing event that the sport has ever seen. Awesome. Thank you, guys. The next question is from Univision Sports with Angel Rodriguez. Yes. Uh, do you have uh, already uh, agreement of the ways, uh, the titles in line on the promotion tour? Get that question? I need yeah, to get that the question. Weight, the weight is 147 pounds. Um, all, all three titles, uh, all three welterweight titles are at stake. And I think the promotional tour um, or the, the publicity schedule is something that uh, we have, we're, we're still finalizing and, and details have not yet been set. Okay, thank you. The next question is from Boxing Scene, David Greisman. Hi, good evening. Uh, you, you mentioned some of the compromises and concessions. What did you all need to concede on in order to make this deal on the network side? And what are some of the compromises that you were able to speak to at this moment? I, I mean, I, I'll let Stephen answer for him, but for me, I, I you know, I'd prefer to, um, you know, leave the negotiations behind us. We got the deal done, which is the important thing. And, you know, our focus from here forward is how do we make this, you know, into the biggest event of all time, and, and how do we collaborate to do that? So I'm looking forward, not back. I think the only comment I, I, I make about the, uh, the negotiation process is really to echo what, what Ken said. Um, you know, every uh, each side in this negotiation um, – you know, uh, bore, the, bore some of the pain uh, of making the deal. Everyone um, made compromises, and, and that's why it got done. Um, and, and we are looking forward to making this the biggest event ever. I apologize if this is one of those topics that's still being resolved at this moment, but in terms of the replay, I know that you're looking at May 2nd, but in terms of the replay, do both networks have rights to replay this fight one week later? The replay is something we're not we're not discussing at this point. All right, thank you both. Thank you, David. The next 
question is from FightNews.com, Gary Williams. Yes, hi. Uh, good evening. Um, th- uh, we have to assume that the drug situation, the, the drug testing, is in good shape. How did that come about? How did that get uh, squared away for this fight to take place? That piece was, was really something that was handled directly uh, between the, the boxers and the promoters. Um, so, so to be completely candid, you know, Ken and I are, aren't really in the, in the best position to, to really address that at all. All right, thank you very much. The next question is from BoxingScene.com, Jake Donovan. Uh, this question is for both of you. I mean, you can choose who answers first. Um, what was your relationship uh, going into this before the negotiations? And would you say that your relationship has improved as a result of getting the fight done? Uh, we're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, you know, look, we, we work for competitors, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we don't, we don't travel with the same people in the same circles and we've known each other a long time and there's a lot of history. So it's not difficult to get on the phone and, you know, talk about what challenges we have with certain positions and, and reflect that in the deal and what issues they have to, at Showtime to contend with. And, you know, it's a very healthy relationship. And, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if we're going out for a beer afterwards. What's important is that, you know, as I said before, that we got, we did everything we could to get this deal done. And, um, you know, I have a lot of respect for what Showtime has accomplished. Obviously, you know, I worked there for a big chunk of my career. And um, I wouldn't have stayed there if it wasn't a fantastic place. I have a lot of friends there still, and, um, you know, I think that that's going to make this a really fun experience for me, is being able to work with, you know, a whole team of people that I worked with for, you know, 20-plus years. Thank you. I, I would, I, I, you know, for my part, I'd, I'd characterize, um, you know, the entire process as collegial. Um, you know, just because it was a complex, you know, complicated negotiation um, doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that there, it was confrontational, um, you know, and this got done in a very respectful and collegial way. You know, with respect to Ken, you know, I, I'd echo the comments. I, I respect him. I've known him as both as an, a lawyer and ex, an executive. Um, you know, the, the sort of interesting piece, you know, Ken and I got to know each other when we were uh, on sort of opposite sides of, of the Mike Tyson business when I was uh, one of Mike's lawyers, and Ken was um, legal uh, and business affairs here at Showtime. So we've uh, we've dealt with each other in a number of different roles over the years, um, you know, and uh, I think that's helped um, the process thus far, and will continue to help it as we work together over the next few months. Okay, great. Thank you uh, both very much, and congratulations on getting done. The next question is from the Guardian, Brian Graham. Hi guys, congratulations. Um, when it comes to the mechanics of the joint pay-per-view, um, how helpful as a blueprint um, was the Tyson Lewis pr- promotion that HBO and Showtime collaborated on 13 years ago, or was it completely irrelevant? I, I think it was a real good roadmap for for all of us. Um, you know, it showed number one that this can be done successfully. And that the, you know, there's a lot of mechanics that go into this when two networks are working together. And those mechanics carry forward um, just in terms of how things operate behind the scenes. So I think it was really helpful. And we actually, you know, and, and Stephen, well, I think would reinforce this. We referred to that as a roadmap. But we didn't exactly follow it, but, um, you know, it was really healthy that we had it. And it, it, it was a help, but, uh, you know, also keep in mind um, there are some elements of this deal um, which uh, were never addressed, were never considered or contemplated in Lewis Tyson. For example, at Lewis Tyson, there really wasn't the concept of behind-the-scenes shows. Um, so that's an element that has obviously, you know, come up in the meantime. So um, not only are there differences, you know, in the companies and and in sort of the business objectives between now and then, there are some elements of the business that have changed as well. And one other thing, is there any point that either of you can sort of point to during the negotiations where either of you felt that, you know, things had kind of turned the corner, uh, anything that you look back to? 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think the the meeting from uh, the meeting between uh, Floyd and Manny at the Heat game, um, I, I think, it certainly greased the wheels in some ways in getting uh, through the final stages of of the the process. But I, I think really, um, you know, one of the main reasons this deal got done when maybe uh, when the other ones didn't was really having Leslie Moonves uh, as part of the process. Um, he was deeply committed to making this deal. He was, he is someone that all parties in this uh, in this negotiation respected, and he was really the catalyst uh, for seeing this through. Um, really refused to take uh, no for an answer from any side, um, and really was there um, making sure that the parties came together uh, in a successful and a cooperative manner. I think we have time for one more question, Chris. Yeah, thank you, Ray. Um, Operator, if we have one more, we'll take it, and then we'll let the guys go off uh, on a Friday evening here after a long week. Thank this you. The next question is from Boxing Insider, Sean Kroos. Hi. Uh, first of all, congratulations to everyone. Um, I just wanted to ask, there is no room for rematch. As difficult as it was, if rematch is asked for, would you guys be willing to go through it all again? <laughs> I, uh, let's get through May 2nd for me. Uh, that's right. <laughs> See how it goes. Uh, ask me that question on May 3rd. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the, the, the reality is, you know, if it's... Um, you know, if it's something the fans want and, and it's something yeah. the fighters want, then the networks will, will find a way to make it happen. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, want to thank you for your time. Uh, you know how to reach Raymond, myself. Um, we look forward to working with you throughout this promotion. Ken, of course, Ray, I'm looking forward to working with you guys personally. So. Hi, I'm Roy Jones, and you're watching HoopJab.com. Ta-da.